Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Thursday, May 30th, 2024. And today is National Water of Flower Day. You know, I have planters on my back deck that every year I plan on on planting, putting some flowers in there, and every year I never get around to doing it. And um, one of these years I definitely will. And uh, but anyway, if you have uh, if you have planted flowers, or you go to a park and there's some wild flowers growing, give them a water today on this National Water of Flower Day. Uh, if you're reading along in the Gospels uh, this month, we're finishing up the month of May, so we only got two more readings of the Gospels left, and then we're going to switch over to the Book of Psalms. Uh, but if you're reading along in the Gospels, uh, today we're reading John chapter 19 and 20. John chapter 19 and 20. And today we're going to take a look at a story. Um, This is after the death of Jesus now. In John chapter 19, we're going to read verses 38 through 42. Scripture says, And after this, this is after the death of, of Jesus on the cross, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, Uh, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him leave he came therefore and took the body of Jesus and there came also Nicodemus which was the first to come to Jesus which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pound weight and they took the body of Jesus and wound it in in linen cloths with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never a man laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand." I'm going to stop right there because we see two men coming to the sepulcher, coming to the cross after Jesus was was already dead and taking Jesus and preparing him to be buried uh, according to Jewish traditions. Now we all know that that when Mary and the other ladies had came on the first day of the week on Resurrection Day, they were coming to finish the preparation and give him a proper burial. But the preparation that that uh, Joseph and, and Nicodemus here is giving Jesus is just kind of a quick one to get him in the ground, and um, then go to their to their um, go to their day of worship, go to their Sabbath day. But we see two men here that brought Jesus to the tomb. Verse thirty eight and thirty nine introduce them to us. Verse thirty eight tells us a little bit about Joseph of Arimathea. Scripture says that he was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews. Now, see, here's a man that followed Jesus, but he didn't exactly make it known. He kept it secret because back here in the Gospel of John, chapter number 9, you may be able or be remember reading the story about this man that was born blind, and Jesus healed the man. And the Pharisees didn't like it and was questioning this man, didn't believe he was actually blind, uh, didn't believe his testimony that he was blind. They called in his parents and everything. And in chapter 9, verse 22, Scripture tells us, These words spake his parents, um, referring back to verse 21, um, for because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So the the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, already made their threats, and Joseph of Arimathea, uh, being obviously being a righteous man and somebody that was part of the synagogue, didn't want to get thrown out, so he was a secret disciple of Jesus. 
and he came and he asked Pilate for the body and and Pilate gave him the body of Jesus and there also came a man named Nicodemus we read about him in verse 38 and scripture says here that that he first came to Jesus by night and if we go back to John chapter 3 you remember uh, verses 1 and 2 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the same also came to Jesus by night and said unto him Rabbi we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him now Nicodemus I don't know if he was exactly sincere or not but he did come to Jesus by night he came to Jesus under the cover of darkness so maybe others wouldn't see him going to him because he was he was a Pharisee he was a religious leader and and the other religious leaders the other Pharisees and was all jealous of Jesus and wanted to do away with him but here comes Nicodemus I don't know if he was if he was a disciple of Jesus or if he was trying to to frame Jesus or what it is that was that was going on at this particular point but we can believe here uh, as we get to chapter 19 of John that he must have believed in Jesus because he was there and and prepared Jesus for his burial maybe that was one of their duties I don't know but we also see see Nicodemus here in John chapter 7 and verse number 50 and uh, here is is where they're trying to get Jesus uh, trying to come up with with getting Jesus arrested and things and in verse number 50 Nicodemus saith unto them he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hears him, and know what he doeth? So he was challenging his his peers, these other religious leaders, that they need to make sure that they don't go outside the law and do something illegal, that they need to hear Jesus and we need they need to see what he's doing. So here we have Nicodemus and we have Joseph of Arimathea that came and they they buried Jesus. They prepared him according to how how they would have have done the burial, and they placed him in a tomb. And verse 41 here of John chapter 19 says, Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden was a new sepulchre or a new tomb, wherewith was never, or wherein was never a man yet laid. And we see back here in, in Matthew chapter 27 identifies this a little bit further because this is interesting. Uh, Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 60. We'll start in verse number 59. And when Joseph, this is Joseph of Arimathea, when he had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own in his own new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed so we see that joseph of arimathea here is the one who made this tomb and i guess he gave it to jesus because he knew he was going to get it back again he trusted the word of jesus here that he was going to get his tomb back so as we studied all these things and we see the things that these these men did it it made me question and it made me think because you know sometimes i think about things a little differently than other people think about it but i started thinking where were the disciples the disciples the very men that jesus taught the very men that jesus chose the very men that he poured his soul into for these three and a half years of ministry and here at the the death of jesus during a time when jesus would have needed prepped for burial his disciples are nowhere to be found and i thought where where would they be and we can find that out here if we go back to the gospel of mark in chapter number 14 mark chapter number 14 verse number 27 jesus says to him all ye shall be offended or stumble because of me this night for it is written i will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered 
So Jesus is telling them plainly here. He said, you all are going to stumble. You all are going to fall. And in verse 29, Peter says to him, Hey, although all shall fall, all thou shalt be offended, yet I will not. Peter was making a false promise right there. Jesus told them, told all of them that they were going to stumble. They were going to fall. And if we jump over here to verse number 50, after Jesus is arrested, after he is taken away, Scripture says, and they all forsook him and fled. Even Peter, the one who said, hey, I'm not going to run. I'm not going to stumble. And if we actually, let's jump down to verse 31 too. Because after Peter said, I'm not going to stumble, Jesus warns him that this day, even this night, before the cock crow crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter spake all the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. All of them pledged their allegiance to Jesus. And according to verse 50, all of them, when the going got rough, the disciples got going. And as I was thinking about that, I started thinking about myself. I thought, what if I was one of the disciples? Would I have been there like Nicodemus was, like Joseph of Arimathea was? I'd like to think I would be. Peter thought he would have been, but he wasn't. And the rest of them thought they would have been. But he wasn't. And they weren't. And how many times are we going through something in our life? And we make claims to Jesus like, Oh, oh God, if you you heal so-and-so, if you do this for me, I'll be in church every Sunday and I'll never miss and I'll read your Bible and I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And how many of us keep doing it? We're exactly like the disciples. And we get to running. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus prepared Jesus for his burial. The disciples took off and fled. I don't know where they went. But these other two secret disciples, if you will, came and prepared Jesus. I'm sure in the back of their minds, you know, I'm sure Joseph knew he was going to get his tomb back. What has all this got to do with us today? The point that I'm wanting to make with this is that when when we're going through times, tough times, when we're going through trials, when we're going through days that stuff happens that we don't expect to happen that's not the time that we need to forsake him and run that's the time we need to get close and we need to sit in his lap remember when you were a kid and you um, maybe you fell off your bike and skinned your knee and you go crying home to mom or you go crying home to dad what's the thing that they usually did They'd wash it off, and then they'd, they'd, they'd kiss it, and they'd put a Band-Aid on it. And that made everything good. But maybe sometimes you might have crawled into your dad's lap or your mom's lap to get that comfort. When we're going through times of trial, that's what we need to be doing. It's getting close to God. That's not the time to run. That's the time to get close to God. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But if that's you today, don't forsake Jesus. Don't run away. Crawl up in his lap and let him protect you as you're going through that time of trial. I'm sure the disciples, none of them wanted to believe that those events that happened with the crucifixion of Jesus would never have happened. And I'm sure they didn't want it to happen. And none of us want the trials we're going through to happen. But that ain't the time to run. That's the time to be steadfast. And that's the time to stay with Jesus. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word. And allow God's word to get into you. Then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Bless
it up. The tanker truck is going to blow. There's nothing we can do about it. I want everyone in the hot zone out. Fire, police, everyone. Do we have all the houses evacuated? Just about, sir. Just about? Well, there are a couple of houses where the people look really comfortable. I hated to bother them. What? Well, one house was getting ready to have dinner. You know how rude it is to be interrupted during dinner. The Bible says that there will come a time when people who do not believe in Jesus will stand before God and face an eternity in hell. Look, that tanker is going to explode. Do your job. Get in there and tell those people they're in danger. Oh, can't we send someone else? I feel really awkward telling people, get out now before your house explodes. I mean, who's going to believe that? Because Jesus died for us, we can escape an eternal punishment in hell by having faith in him. If you're not telling others about this good news, what excuses are you using? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. 